transforming us into the likeness of Jesus. Last week we were talking about that, that uh, holiness, that, that wanting to become more like God. Not to become God, but, but to live our lives, that sanctification aspect of, of, of how we are grateful for what Jesus has done for us. And the Word and the Spirit together are provided for our empowerment so that we may move forward in wisdom and strength. And ultimately, we cannot separate those two. In Ephesians 4.14, we read, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up in him who is the head that is Christ. One of the greatest needs in the church today is for Christians to grow in their understanding of the Bible. On Wednesday nights, we've been doing this Alpha study, um, and one of the things is we're watching these videos, and there's always a segment in this video where they're asking people the, these different questions like, uh, who is God, or who is Jesus, or what do you know about the Holy Spirit, or, or you know, what do you think of prayer? They're asking all these questions, and a lot of times when we get done watching and, and we're discussing, it, it amazes us how many people really know nothing about Christianity. They know nothing about God. And the sad part of it is, is, you know, we sit here and it's like our hearts break because this is such a wonderful message. God's word is, is such a wonderful thing, you know, how can we get those people to understand? But, but maybe what's even sadder is the fact that I think we'd be surprised how many people that say they have that relationship with Christ that are Christians are not able to answer those questions because they have very seldom ever gotten into God's word. We have lots of opportunities every day to get into God's Word. And unfortunately, what has happened is we have become so used to someone else feeding us. You come here on a Sunday morning, it's like, well, Pastor Luke will feed us a little bit of Scripture for the week. Or, or maybe you go to a Bible study during the week, and that's enough feeding. But we, we get so used to someone else feeding us that ultimately we're unable to feed ourselves. Biblical illiteracy is on the rise. And maturity in Christ is impossible without constant and careful study of the Bible. Have you ever tried cutting down a tree with a dull axe? If you have, it doesn't work very well. And when we try to live our Christian life without study of God's Word, it's sort of like that. In Hebrews 5, starting at verse 11, it says this. We have much to say about this, but it's hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. You know, basically what's being said here is, is we have spent an awful lot of time continuing to just drink milk when at some point we should have started eating food. We, we should have started to learn and grow in such a way that we're no longer the student, but now we've become the teacher. In verse 13, and it goes on and it says, Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. It's a reminder to us that there's, there's maybe a point where we move on. You know, none of you sitting here, unless you're under the age of probably two or even one, are continuing to just drink milk and that's it. Every one of you has advanced from going from milk to solid food, food that is beneficial to your body, food that makes you strong, food that allows you to, to move through each day. And when we talk about God's Word, if we're just going to continue to be infants and we're just continuing to re receive milk every once in a while, we know in the end it doesn't do us any good. 
And we need to get into God's Word where we can sort of grab hold of that solid food and, and what God has to say and what God reveals to us. And as He does so, it allows us to be able to distinguish between the good and evil. It allows us to, to cleanse ourselves and, and to live that sanctified life that God calls us to live. And it allows us to be able to, to have a confidence to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone else around us. In Amos 8.11, it says, The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. You know, just this past week, I had a conversation with someone about our, our relationship with Christ. And this person shared with me how they wanted to grow, how, how they wanted to, to have that deeper, more intimate relationship with God, and yet there was sin that was continuing to hinder that growth, and, and they were very frustrated. It was almost that feeling of, I will never be able to be good enough to, to be where God wants me to be. And, and in our conversation, we got talking about, about what are we doing to allow ourselves to be more focused on God? What are we doing to allow God to really work through us and to be able to help us step away from maybe the sin that, that entangles us? And, and so I asked the question. I said, what kind of music are you listening to? What are the things that you are reading? What are the thoughts that you have? And now how can you change those and how can you, you make them God-focused and God-centered? It's that mindset of the garbage that goes into our lives is the garbage that's going to go out. And the good things that we bring into our lives are going to be the good things that are brought out. And so if we are bringing God's Word into our lives, then God's Word is going to, to go back out. It's going to be reflected out. We talked about how fresh bread and that smell of it is delicious. And it's hard to not be hungry when we smell that fresh bread. Old bread, however, is not very appealing. You know, if you're hungry enough, you maybe will eat it, but it's not desirable. Just this week, I was hungry one evening, and there were some buns in our food pantry. I had no idea how old they were. And so I said to Chris, how old are these, these, these hamburger buns? And she's like, I have no idea. And I said, well, they're not green, so I think maybe I'll be okay to eat them. Well... I, I put, put some, some stuff on the buns, and the first bite I took, and it was like, yeah, something's not right here. I think today, even though something doesn't turn green, there's an awful lot of preservatives in it. But anyway, the bread was not good, all right? And I, and I got rid of it. But the thing of it is, is we have to have the fresh bread of God's Word within us. And then we will be able to speak and people will be able to respond. God's word should motivate us to work hard in discovering the beauty of who God is and what Jesus has done for us and the fulfillment that we find within each of our own lives. So why offer stale bread when fresh bread is there for the taking? You know, I started today by asking you a simple question. Where is your Bible? So, where is it? I don't want you to raise your hands, but who has it with them? And for those of you who don't have your Bible with you today, where is it? You know, I have several Bibles. I have one on my desk here at church that often I open up and look at. Um, I use one at times for Bible studies and, and for a study Bible at home. But I always have one in my pocket. Now you're thinking, I didn't know that. Well, I do. You see, it's right here. It's my cell phone. I have found such beauty in knowing that you can always have God's Word with you. So a lot of times when I go to the hospital, I don't bring the actual Bible itself. And I know some people would think, well, you should, um, because I have it here. And I'll, I'll pull this out and I'll find some verses to be able to read when someone is in need that way. Or maybe there's days when uh, I'm doing something, you know, driving, and I'll just plug this into my car radio, and I'll put on the audio aspect of, of the Bible and just let them read Scripture, and I can listen and, and absorb it. But 
the thing of it is, is today we have no excuse for not having God's Bible with us at all times. This next week, we're going to celebrate the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and that's significant because that changed the church. But the beauty, and part of the beauty of that Reformation was this, that it was then for the very first time that people ultimately had God's Word being able to put into their hands to be able to read. Up until the point of the Reformation, uh, the church ultimately uh, it was only brought forth by, by the priest and those within the church, and it wasn't available to the people themselves. So we are celebrating the privilege we have to be able to have God's Word within each of our hands. And that changed the church, and it can change our lives. And we can use it to feed ourselves with the bread of the presence. I want to finish with this quote from Dwight L. Moody. It says this, I prayed for faith and thought that for some day faith would come down and strike me like lightning. But faith did not come down. One day I read in the 10th chapter of Romans, Now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I had closed my Bible and I prayed for faith. I now open my Bible and begin to study, and faith has been growing ever since. Do you believe that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant Word of God? Do you believe that it's a very important book? If you've never read it, then you probably really don't believe it. So again, the question is, is where is your Bible? We have the opportunity to have a copy with us wherever we go. And, and I would challenge you and I would encourage you to take time to read it. Set aside some time in each of your days if you need to, to get into God's Word. The Bible is a story of the mysteries of God revealed. It is His love made known. It is the power of salvation for everyone who believes. And there's power of transformation for everyone who receives it. In Isaiah 55, 8 through 11, it says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and the bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. God's word is a powerful thing. The table of presence reminds us of Jesus Christ saying that he was the bread of life. It reminds us that we have God's word available to us to be able to change our lives, to be able to help us move through life to be able to become a witness that shares the gospel with Jesus, of Jesus Christ to a world that does not know him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word on this day. And Lord, may we be reminded it's not just today that we hear from your word, but we make it a part of our, part of our lives every day with, with many of the opportunities we have. We could be driving in the tractor and we could be listening to the scriptures. We could be driving in a car to a sporting event and we could be listening to the scriptures. We could take some time out of the busyness of our days to get into your word. We, we can have opportunity in just brief moments to, to see what your word has to say for us. Lord, challenge us today to take more opportunity to get into your word because ultimately the more we get into your word, the more our lives are changed and transformed the more we receive the bread of life that comes from you. Lord, may we hear your word on this day and apply it and put it into our lives. Your scriptures say your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May we make it that. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Let's finish our time of worship as the offerings will take our, our, or as the deacons will take our offering and we'll finish by singing Glorify Thy Name. stand. On this day, may you be reminded of God's love. May you grab hold of the sacrifice Jesus made as he gave up his life on the cross. And may you be empowered by the Holy Spirit and go out into this world and make a difference for Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>